Welcome, and thank you for joining us to discuss the 941 Employee Retention Credit. I'm Ashley Ingalls Ross, the Vice President of Small Business at the Huntsville-Madison County Chamber of Commerce, and our guests today are Greg Brown, Co-CEO and CFO of Brown Precision, and this year's Chairman of the Chamber's Board of Directors, Patricia Reagan, Controller and Director of Human Resources at Brown Precision, and Lynn Troy, Co-Founder and CEO of Troy7. Thank you all again for being with us today. We're here to talk about the Employee Retention Credit or ERC. If you're not familiar with this, it's a refundable employment tax credit to help businesses with the cost of keeping staff employed. The ERC expired December 31st, 2021. However, employers may still claim the credit uh, for prior quarters by filing an applicable adjusted employment tax return. There's a lot of additional qualifications and deadlines. Please check with your tax repair for more information about qualifications and your ability to apply. Greg, Patricia, and Lynn have gone through the application process and are gonna share with us a little bit about their uh, experience today. Lynn, do you wanna kick us off? How did you hear about the ERC? Hi, Ashley. Thank you for having me today. I'm happy to share my experience about the ERC with you guys. Um, actually, it was it was late last year when my accountant called and said, hey, we've been doing some calculations and we think you're going to qualify for this tax credit. Um, I had no idea what it was, you know, it, as business owners and we're all head down trying to survive and with all the COVID raising numbers and things we were dealing with, the tax credit was just not on my radar. Um, so they they told me that they had previously looked in 2020 and we did not qualify. So this tax credit started in 2020, but it was more complicated then. You had to have a revenue drop of 50% from your 2019, the same quarter in 2019. So we didn't qualify for that, but we did have a revenue drop in 2021 of over 20% and that's what qualified us. So they changed the requirements so it's a little easier to qualify. So if you thought you didn't qualify before, you might wanna relook it for 21. Um, I do think it actually expired on September 30th, not December though. Originally it was slated to be all four quarters, but when the infrastructure bill passed, they suspended it. So you only can qualify for three quarters in 2021 was my understanding, but I am not an accountant and I do not play one on TV. So <laughs> get professional advice on that. Yes. Um, and there was also some confusion that if you had qualified for a PPP loan that you wouldn't be eligible for this. And, and there's, that's a partial truth. You can still qualify for it. So I'm grateful to my accountants for helping us because I will share with you, you can quickly do the math. If you have 10 employees and you're eligible for $7,000 an employee per quarter back and you qualify for two quarters, that's $140,000. So, I mean, it is worth investigating. Even if you are a small, small, it can be a significant amount of money. Oh, that's, thank you very much. Greg, how about you? Well, I'm going to let Patricia handle most of the detailed questions, but just like Lynn said, it's a, another part of the, stimulus that's keeping companies that have been affected by uh, whether it's a COVID crisis or a partial aerospace crisis like us to, uh, to survive. So I'll turn it over to you for how we heard about it. I actually had been following everything that was being offered by the government, starting with the PPP loans. So I had noticed it at the beginning, but I, like Ms. Troy, we, we did not qualify for 2020 at the very beginning when they first rolled it out. As they started rolling it out, I think they did change quite a bit in 2020, and we would have qualified for a couple of the last quarters, but the expense of having everyone redo their taxes, we would have to redo our financial review that we have done, that did not offset what I would have gotten back on the 2020. 2021, we're actually getting back a little over a million dollars on taxes that we had paid in. So if I was going to give anybody any advice, it would be file the 941X. Do not try to take the credit. And hopefully everybody's already paid their, ta their payroll taxes at this point anyway, so they wouldn't try to use that Form 7260, I believe it was, to actually take the credit. You're better off filing your 941 as normal and then go back and do the 941X. 
And the biggest thing about the PPP loan, you can't double dip. So if you used a million dollars in at the first and second quarter of 2021, and you claim those dollars and you got your PPP loan forgiven, you cannot use those same dollars to qualify on this tax. So the big thing is just to make sure that you take your payroll quarter by quarter, and then you separate out the dollars that you use to get your original PPP loan if it was forgiven, and then use the different dollars that you have remaining for the year to file the 941X. I have this humongous worksheet that I created that I brought in everybody's salary. It's got all of the um, sales month by month, the quarter by quarter, so that way you can see to make sure that you do qualify. And they let 2021 compare to 2019. So as long as you have that decrease in revenue of 20%, then you qualify to actually get some of the tax rebate money back. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad there's <laughs> people like you that figure that out. <laughs> Me too. Wow. And, you, and Lynn, you're right. I did. And I, I think there were some date changes. I don't, I don't know exactly what they were or how they applied. So I'll just reiterate to check with your tax preparer to check on those dates. What can, can I, can either of you uh, share some good resources that you came across or were told about as you went through it? us, the best resource was our CPA. I mean, they were the ones that we relied heavily on um, to, to do our preparation. I, I'll tell you that as I've learned about it since, like I said, December, I haven't, I haven't had a lot of time to do a lot of independent research, but I have found that the cost of having your 941X file varies wildly. So shop that around. I have heard some firms are charging up to 20% of your refund I have heard that payroll companies, if you have them refile your 941X for you, it's about an 8% fee. I will tell you our CPA was much less than either of those. So it's worthwhile to have your CPA do it. If you're lucky like Greg and have somebody in house doing it, then, then even better. But, um, but shop the pricing if you're gonna have an outside firm do it. And it is a complicated set of requirements, like you said, and I would definitely wanna have some expert eyes on it if I was, you know, going to file for this, but it is definitely worth it. I would agree. We had several people and I got several emails from different companies offering to go and look at it for you. But really, I did not read any of the websites that came up. I went straight to the IRS and worked directly off of their documentation because there were so many versions of how it could work out there. And a lot of those people, uh, like Ms. Troy said, wanted a percentage of what they got you. And we got a little over a million dollars and I'm just not willing to give any of that away mm -hmm. to somebody to do a little bit of research and paperwork. So I did have our CPAs to verify all of my information because dealing with the government payroll taxes makes me a little concerned. I don't ever want Greg to be arrested at the front door. So Oh, I bet um, he's grateful. <laughs> <laughs> I did let the CPA verify everything and we came out with my my total to her total, I was off by 0.02%. So the IRS website is the best place to get all of your information. Thank you for sharing that. When I was trying to find stuff about it, it just Boy, there's an awful lot of web pages and an awful, I mean, just one after the other after the other. Yes. And you just it's went to. It's a little to, daunting. What's that? It's a little daunting when you start researching and you see all of this, and then you too will probably start getting all kinds of scam emails because you are on those out there looking and reading about all of that. So it's oh. a little scary. Okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Yes, Lynn, did you have something? I was just going to say that another thing to, to make, to point out is that it's only for employers that have 500 or fewer employees. So for any employer that has more than 500 employees, they don't qualify for this credit in either 20 or 21. But you have up to three years to file your amended returns, the 941 X's. So it's not an emergency to get it filed, but the IRS has a terrible backlog right now. And this was originally meant to in, infused cash into small businesses that were keeping employees on the payroll and they were trying to get the returns turned quickly and the money back in your hands. Um, I, the most recent 
thing that we've been told is expected to take nine to 12 months to get the money back after you file. So my advice right now is file as soon as you can if you know you're gonna have an amended return because you're gonna be waiting a while to get that money back. And that money is taxable because it's, it's basically offsetting a cost so it hits your revenue line. So don't spend it all before you get it because you will have to pay taxes <laughs> on it as well. <laughs> How long did it take for you to hear? I, I don't have mine back yet. Oh, okay. So we just we don't have ours, ours either. December. Okay. Sorry, what? We actually filed ours at the end of October. So we ha and I have not gotten anything back yet. I just still have that comfortable feeling that since the CPA verified it, that I am going to get it. But when we filed our, mm -hmm. ours, the time frame was six to eight months. Okay. So, Sounds like that's increasing. Yes. And <laughs> keep in mind that um, the year that you get, when you get the credit, your ta you have to show that on that year's taxes. So even though I will not receive the funds until 22, I have to show that on my 21 taxes. You have to offset the year that you're getting it, those expenses on that year. Wow. So we just, so. That translates to we just paid an incredibly high quarterly tax payment in January in anticipation of this credit. And it was not fun, but it, it'll be worth it in the long run. Oh, my gosh. Very good. Any, anything else? Any other nuggets of information that you think people could benefit from? You've given a lot. <laughs> you've you've offered up a lot. The only other thing I would say is for the GovCons out there that want to file for this, because a lot of GovCons didn't file for PPP, um, it will impact your indirect rate structure for um, your cost plus contracts. So it is something if you are going to file it, you'll want to do that before you file your incurred cost submission in June so that you can reconcile all of your cost plus accounts from the year prior. And that's where we're also working right now with our accountant is we're reconciling because we had billed at a rate not expecting that influx of cash. And now that we have that influx of cash, it, it, it lowered our rates. So we got some give backs on it because of that, but not substantial compared to the benefit of this credit. I mean, it's huge, $7,000 per employee per quarter. I mean, that is well worth the paperwork paying somebody to help you file it and in the taxing and the changes to your um, indirect rate structure for billing. So it's complicated though. So you definitely want some help on it. That's, that's what I would say. It's complicated, but worth it. Well worth it. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Lynn. I really appreciate it. Uh, Patricia or Greg, anything else? I think Lynn summed it up pretty well. Well, thank you all very much once again for joining us. Um, I would encourage at just uh, as Lynn and uh, Patricia both said, please check, check with your tax preparers, CPAs, accountants, all of those number people to make sure you're getting it right um, if, you, if you choose to pursue it. And with that, that's all I have for you all today. Thank you again for being with us.